Have you guys ever been working on a graph or trough document and wanted to make a link to a section of the page or even a URL? Well, thanks to Neatrough, you finally can. And by the end of this video, you guys will know how to too. Now, for a while now, I've gotten a lot of questions about implementing PDF features such as links. And the biggest reason I never really covered it was because Groff had, in my opinion, a really bad implementation. I found that it broke all the time. You had to use PDF Roth. And honestly, I found it really confusing and I didn't really know of a good way to cover it in just one video. Thankfully, Neatroff builds in this feature and you can actually use it in a PostScript file or a PDF file. And if you use it in a PostScript file, then if you convert that PostScript file to a PDF later on using something like PS to PDF, it'll still work, which is awesome. Unfortunately, Neatroff doesn't really come with any macros that implement the linking and bookmark features that you'd expect from maybe something like LaTeX. But the nice thing about it is that the implementation of them is so simple that you can start implementing them yourself and put them wherever you'd like without having to really think about it too much. In this video, I'll just be using the dash m post macros, which are pretty simple. And really, you could do this without using those macros, but they kind of simplify things a bit more. All right, now that's enough time wasting. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Now I'm assuming that you're relatively new to Neatroff. Basically, I'm just going to run this command to git clone the Neatroff make repository. So when I git clone that, it will take a little bit and then I can cd into it. So Neatroff make, and then I'm gonna run make init and this will initialize the repositories. And then once that's done, you've basically cloned the repositories and done a lot of the font setup. And now we're just gonna do make neat, and then that will compile everything for us. All right, now that that's all done, we're just going to CD into the demo directory. And then if I just do an LS, you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff in here. If you've done my previous video where I mentioned Neatroff, I showed a lot of this stuff off. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to edit the make file. And you'll see the big thing that I wanted to point out is that we have the dash M post macros are being used. And so for this, just to make things simple and not have you guys set up a whole new make file and go through all that process, I'm just gonna note that pretty much everything we're doing in this video is using the M post macros and then a few other macros. But the important one is this, this will be handling all of our postscript and our links and marking and everything like that. Now we're just going to add a file in here. We're going to do links.pdf. All right. And then we're just going to save that. And then we're going to open a new file and we're going to create a new file called links.ms. All right. And so this will be our file. And now we're just going to do some tester text in here. So hello. And we're just going to save and make that and then open that up. And there we go. We have a simple example text. Now for this, we're going to be using a few macros. So the important ones are dot post as m post as you'd expect dot url is what we'll use for our urls and then we will also have name now there are some additional macros that are included in the m post macros but for now we're going to ignore them because really this is all we're worried about which is linking but feel free to poke around in there and take a few looks and get ahead of what we're covering in our videos obviously they're pretty straightforward if you take a peek at the macros and for those of you guys that don't know where that is you can just go up to the demo directory and then up one more and then go to tmac and then in here you'll see there's a bunch of stuff and we're just going to do tmac.post and here's where it all is so this will give you a bunch of information on how they all work they're pretty straightforward file is like super small too so there's not too much to it only 38 lines for the rest of the video we're actually going to just focus on these two now just to give you guys a really simple example how we're going to make a url which is pretty simple to link to we're going to do dot post dot url and then we're going to give it a url so we're going to do let's do https colon slash slash duck duck go.com so we're going to do that and then we're just going to make and then open that up and we get a link right there that is clickable now your link is going to look different from mine there's not really too much to it. I basically have a specific a patch applied that I will show you guys later on in the video, but normally it will look like this. So you'll have a box around your link. So if I just zoom in, you will see that there is a box around it. And you guys will probably see this if you do the same. Now you can go ahead and just click this link and it will open in your browser. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but you get the idea. So I could just double click, bam, there you go. Now, chances are you probably want a bit more to it. So you'll probably want to go ahead and give it a bit more of a description. So maybe duck, duck, go. You don't really want that whole HTTPS sort of thing before it. So if I actually just compiled this and open it up, you'll see that it looks the same right now, but let's just compile it. And then we see, oh, it's replaced by the following text, which is pretty convenient. Now, like you'd expect, I could say hello there 
and then compile that and open it up and we will get a hello there and then the link as we would expect. What we can actually do on top of that is we can put some stuff after it like here or her and then make and then open that up and you'll see that it adds some stuff afterwards. Sometimes we probably don't want to have this on a new line. Maybe we want to have it in line. Now this is actually pretty easy to adapt. We just do backslash star and then in brackets we put it all there. So now this is all one line and if I make that and open it up, you'll see it looks the exact same, saving that space there that we put earlier. And as you can see, it is still clickable in the same way you would expect. Now, the reason this is able to work this way is just because in trough, graph, and neotrough, um, strings and macros actually use the same namespace. So if I actually made a macro called here, and I just do de here, dot hello, then I could just call it by doing dot here, and then open it up and you'll see, oh, there you go. It says here or hello, sorry. And so that looks the same. And then I could put hello and then make that. And you'll see, oh, it says hello, hello, as we'd expect. But we can also do backslash star just like that. And then you'll see it looks the exact same. So this is a way to use macros in line. The biggest thing is that if your macro uses multiple lines, like maybe I put a space in here and do hey, and then I make and compile that, you'll see, oh, it puts the new line there because it doesn't really know how to handle this. And it will just basically treat it as if we called it on the next line. That's kind of the drawback. The cool thing is that you can also do ds um, so defining a string is how you do DS and then we can get basically the same result. And then there you go. Works pretty much how you'd expect. The really interesting thing about how this works is that Neetroff as well as Groff, and I think there might be other implementations, but they add another thing where you can actually give it an argument. So let's go back to here and maybe I do backslash backslash dollar sign one. And this means that take the first argument. And so to pass it an argument, we just go the new one. So we're going to do new arg. And then if I just compile that and open it up, you'll see, oh, it takes dollar sign one. Oh, my bad. I forgot to make this DE. There we go. That should work now. We get what we would expect. We basically are calling it in line. Pretty cool. Hey? Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this sort of stuff, don't worry about it too much. Uh, you'll start to get the hang of it after you've worked around with macros a bit. This is just a little interesting fact for those of you guys that didn't know this. Now, while we can do our little link thing right here where we have a little link, maybe you guys want to link to a different part of the page. So how we actually do that instead of just using a normal URL as you'd expect is pretty similar to uh, HTML anchors if you guys have ever used those. So you post dot name and we're going to give this a name. We're just going to say here. And so we're just going to save that. And if we compile and open that back up, we'll see, oh, nothing really changed. We still have our UL, URL here. But now if we go to our URL, delete that till. And so now instead of having the URL here, we're going to put hash here, All right? So this right here, this here matches the other here. So now if I compile that and open it back up, we'll see, oh, there's a link, but what's the difference? There's nothing really happening. Well, if I do a dot BP to break the page here, and so now, like I said before, if we just open this up, here's some text. And if we go to the next page, so page two, and I click on this, bam, takes us right back, which is pretty convenient. Now on top of that, we can actually do this the other way around. So maybe if we wanted to go like this um, and then make that and then open that back up, we will see, oh, there's a link. Click that, bam, takes me to the second page. If you guys have ever tried to do this in any other trough implementation, it can be a bit of a headache because most of the time you can't actually link back and forth. You can only really link one way most of the time. If you guys have ever tried to do maybe, for example, incrementing a number and trying to reference things before they have actually been defined in trough, um, that can be really annoying. But luckily, this gets over it by doing a pretty simple process and it ends up making things a lot more simple. You actually can't use this one in line because it uses a page break in the, um, or not page break, line break. So unfortunately, you do have to use name on its own line, but you can still call post URL on the same line as you'd expect. Now, the big thing to note here is that if you do call it, it will break the line. So right here, as you can see, it's actually made a line break there. So instead of continuing on as you'd expect, so if we put like some other stuff on the next line, it will continue on the next line right where our post.name was, it will break the line. 
which is pretty understandable and it's not really that big of a deal as long as you put it around the paragraph you don't actually put it in the middle of a paragraph obviously unless you really wanted a line break for some reason now something i should point out though is the fact that even though in my situation it's not actually doing this but if we open this up zathura you'll see that it puts a box around it so this is what most pdf viewers will do so the biggest reason that I mention this is because probably a lot of you guys would like to handle this yourselves, you know, you're on your own. You don't want somebody to decide how you want to box your text or underline it or whatever you want to do. So the way that you guys can solve this is there's actually a patch out there that can do this. So you're just going to patch the source code, which might sound a bit intimidating, but I assume if you're into this niche of stuff, it's uh, probably not that big of a deal for you. Now there is a really cool little package on GitHub that you guys can take a look at. There's a bunch of stuff in here. It's basically a whole macro set with a bunch of other tools. But the big thing is that there is the UTMAC macros and I'll put a link to this in the description. But if you click on Neetroff right here, you'll see that there is a bunch of options and invisible links.diff is what we're looking for. So there's this diff right here. And if you just go to the raw, then this will be just the raw diff. You guys can go ahead and copy that from down in the description, but then we're just gonna CD into neatroff make and then CD into neat host. And so here is where the actual links and everything are handled. And so I'm just gonna do W get, and we're just gonna paste that raw.diff file that we have right here. And once again, it's linked down in the description. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna do git apply and then we're going to do invisible links .diff. And then once we've applied that, we can just run make. And then now going back to our actual code that we were looking at before. Now going back to our actual code, uh, we can just do make clean and then make. And it will take a bit to compile everything. Once that's done, we can just open this in Zathura and you'll see, oh, our link is no longer boxed and we can now click it, which is pretty awesome. Maybe you wanted to indicate it a bit more so you could do something like maybe turning the text blue. So you can use this to turn the text blue in Neetroff. And then I'm just going to make that and then open it and bam, there you go. Our link is now blue. Like maybe some of you guys might be used to. So pretty simple. Now, I know this video was short, but if you guys are interested in seeing more of this, maybe a bit more in depth, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon, and be sure to turn on notifications so you guys will know when my next video comes out. Also, liking this video really helps a lot, so be sure to do that if you want to support the channel. Now, finally, I would like to thank Brian Jenks and DFDX for supporting me on GitHub Sponsors. If you guys want to support the channel, be sure to support me on GitHub Sponsors or Patreon. I'd really appreciate it, but don't feel like you guys have to. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.